A very pleasant good afternoon and welcome to our noonday prayer. As we begin another work week, we want to register appreciation for God's presence. So we want to take a moment of prayer, silent prayer, as we begin to bring before God the desires and petitions of our heart. As we remember, of course, those who have asked us to pray for them and those who would appreciate our prayers at this time. We want to remember the Esquivel family. We pray for Lady Esquivel and the rest of the family at the passing of our former Prime Minister, the Right Honorable Sir Manuel Esquivel. So, for all who have requested our prayers, let us take a moment to remember them. God is love, and this is how he showed his love among us. He sent his only Son into the world, that we may have life through him. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our reading today comes from Gospel of John, chapter 9, and beginning to read at the first verse. As Jesus walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. And he went and washed and came back, able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, It is he. Others were saying, No, but it is someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, Then how were your eyes opened? He answered, the man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes, and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, Where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. He said to them, He put mud on my eyes, then I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, How can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? They were divided. So they again said to the blind man, What do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. He said, He's a prophet. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. For a little reflection this afternoon, turn our attention to some of the opening verses of the scripture passage we just heard read. John chapter 9 verses 2 and 3. Jesus' disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned. 
He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. In this story, Jesus is confronted with perhaps what we can call the conventional wisdom of the day. And it is expressed, of course, in the question of his disciples. The assumption was that all illnesses, including blindness, and maybe especially when you were born blind, is the result of sin, a punishment from God. In truth, even today, many of us still tend to think in these terms. And whereby we do suffer the consequences of our actions and decisions, whether they are good or bad, you know, you, you don't eat right and you will get sick, you smoke too much, you will um, perhaps have lung cancer, you drink too much and you can have some other effects, you eat too much sweet, you could end up with diabetes and so on and so forth. So we accept that our actions and our decisions have consequences. We are yet, however, in this story, challenged to appropriately assess the implications of these outcomes of our decisions and actions and the implications they have for our walk of faith as Christians. Jesus in this story turns things upside down by presenting the view that suffering, instead of simply being punishment for sin, as popularly believed, can be an opportunity to discover and experience the love, grace, and presence of God. It's quite a remarkable thing he did here. And what a radical perspective to accept that in the middle of our suffering, even those that are the results of our actions and decisions, that in the midst of those suffering and consequences, we can hope for God's intervention rather than being forced to accept that this is our faith thanks to God's judgment. Jesus was trying to open his disciples and other people's eyes to the fact that God's love is so great that it does indeed overcome our past, the mistakes we've made, the consequences of our actions and decisions, once we put ourselves in a position to embrace that love and grace available to us. And so then, my sisters and brothers, may we seek to encourage one another in our walk of faith. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, hear our prayer and let our cry come to you. O God, the strength of all who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers, and because in our weakness we can do nothing without you, give us the help of your grace, that in keeping your commandments we may please you both in will and deed. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Grant, Lord, that we may be faithful to you without turning aside, worship you without growing weary, serve you without failing, diligently seek you, happily find you, and forever possess you, the one and only God, blessed forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. now, my friends, may the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon us and grant us his peace. And the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. 
the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us this day, with our loved ones near or far, and remain with us always. Amen. Peter Church.